Hello, everybody. This is Di, anti-natalist, and um, I'm going to talk about being comfortable versus uncomfortable and the efforts that it takes in life. Hey, Carmelita. <laughs> um, the effort that it takes in life to um, get comfort and to maintain comfort. So let me um, start off with this morning. And um, there's something wrong. I had something wrong with my ear. And I was lucky enough to get an appointment within two days to a specialist. And um, so I had a 115 appointment. And um, I got there early, right? And um, I waited and waited and waited. I left my car on in the parking lot just to keep the seats and the steering wheel warm because it was 16 degrees today. And um, I went out. I briefly shoveled a bit of snow, but it's not necessary because... I mean, you can just, you know, use your car to run over the snow. Um, and it wasn't melting, so there was no ice. And so I shoveled a bit, just the path to my car. And I walked several dogs, four dogs, um, and they loved it. So, and during that time, in the 16-degree Fahrenheit weather... Um, my hands were so uncomfortable. And, um, I, you know, I, I got a million gloves. They're in the house somewhere. I just, you know, I didn't have them, didn't put them on. And um, gloves are just a pain in the butt, and they're hard to keep together. And, um, you know, you're always dropping one or the other. But, um yeah, that started off my day with a lot of discomfort. And um, I'm ordinarily not bothered with the cold unless it's, you know, windy and just brutal. I'm actually more um, suffering in hotter climates, humid climates. So anyway, um, so I was at this doctor's office and uh, there was only one doctor in there today and the 115 appointment took one hour and 40 minutes of wait time now I'm pretty sure that they overbooked appointments um, just to ensure that you know with cancellations and no shows that you know they were able to fill up spots because if they don't if somebody doesn't show up then that's time that a doctor could be seeing a patient and um, treating somebody because, you know, they have eight or nine hours a day that they work and um, those spots are limited and those spots are priceless. So anyway, um, yeah, so I had left my car on for at least an hour and then at that time I went outside and turned it off and then... You know, I was seen for my appointment, which was a quick fix. It just didn't really, nothing was really wrong. Um, but, um, you know, at my age, when you go to the doctor, the, the doctors that I see pertain to older people. I mean, you know, I'm way past those reproductive years doctors, um, I don't have, you know, juvenile problems. And um, in the waiting room, there's, you know, 75-year-old and 80-something-year-old people. So, um, you know, over 60, the climate is very different um, for medical care. And it seems like there's always... Um, something wrong. I mean, it seems like you trade in your youthful problems and you trade in your middle age problems 
for a new set of problems um, regarding senior years, uh, declining years, um, the no going back years. And that's, that's, that defines my age group, the no going back. And, um, you know, you know, the stages of grief, and, and I want to go through that, um, D-A-B-M-A. D stands for disbelief. Um, uh, I think I forgot what A was. Um, hmm. I might have to write it down below. D-A-B-M-A. Okay. Um, oh, no. Disbelief, anger, bargaining, mourning, and acceptance. So I was a psychology major. That's what my degree was in. And um, I also um, minored in sociology and anthropology, which were very, uh, very interesting to me. And I love human nature. I love, I, I mean, I, I love just analyzing things. So I guess that's where I come from in my um, scope of this philosophy. I love to um, dissect things and attribute uh, um, you know, reasons and um, labels, if you will, to things. It helps me understand this world. And um, so um, anyway, with these senior um, years that, you know, I'm, I'm, I've entered, um, it seems like I've been bargaining a lot lately. Like, these thoughts just go through my head, and I'll bargain with myself, like, well, I really wish I was... 10 years younger or you know I, I really wish my I didn't have these gray streaks in my hair anymore or you know like these lines on my face like you know I just wish I felt and looked the way I did look at 58 and not 62 and I wish my eyesight was as good as it was when I was 40 and I've been going through these motions of bargaining. So I don't know if it's a stage of grief. I mean, I'm guessing that declining in years and aging is a process of loss, grief, mourning, and acceptance. I'm pretty much accepting all the bad stuff um, because, um, you know, a lot of doctor's appointments, and one doctor's appointment leads to another doctor's appointment, and then they want to, you to go to specialist. And you know, what nobody tells you is that chronic problems are chronic problems, and most of the problems that you encounter in your 20s and 30s will be chronic and incurable. And nobody tells you that. There's a lot of things that nobody tells you. Nobody tells people not to reproduce. And there's very few female antinatalists that are on YouTube advocating for non-reproduction. But that is the safest thing for anybody to do. Um, and I advocate um, voluntary human extinction, pro-mortalism. I'm a right-to-die advocate. Um, um, I don't respect life. I don't respect natalism. I see nothing but harm for everyone that enters this realm of existence. 
and uh, I am documenting my aging process, which I have done for, uh, I would say, almost almost nine years now. Um, one thing you may not know is I did have a first channel, and it was called Child Free Diane. And I had it for about three and a half years, and it was removed just all of a sudden with um, just a video on a dog that um, I had made, and she had blackheads, and um, I had a technique of removing the blackheads, and um, I guess it just, I am still baffled as to why the channel was taken down, because I did appeal it, and um, so along with losing all of your subscribers, I had 2,100 subscribers on that channel. But along with losing all of those, I lost um, my, my videos, which I did have them saved up, but I lost all of the descriptions, the titles, the comments, replies, and I also lost um, my saved videos. Um, I save recipes, I save uh, dancing videos, ballet videos, um, psychological, self-help type videos. So you lose all of that um, along with your channel. But um, I will never stop advocating for voluntary human extinction antinatalism, stopping this crazy uh, reproductivity, um, uh, ceasing placing children into existence where they have to age, suffer, and die. And um, I was kind of in a good mood today. I found a recipe and I was going to make it, so I went to the grocery store, and um, it was a new young woman who was checking the groceries out. Uh, she was check. She was a cashier, and um, she was only sixteen. And she says it was her third job. And um, when I paid for my groceries, I pulled out the credit card, and then I saw my you know, my um, antinatalist business cards in my wallet. And I handed her and her assistant who was teaching her, I handed them two cards and I said, hi, I want to give you my card to share my philosophy with you. And I thought that was a pretty good way to um, break the ice and um, invite them to read my card. So I'm kind of interested in... Um, you know, what they thought about that. I usually don't give a lot of cards out, even though I ordered a lot when I was in Mumbai. I got some really nice business cards made. And um, they're like plastic. They're like a really thin plastic coating, and they don't get, um, they won't tear. And they're waterproof, and they're very, very thin. Or, I mean, like a sliver. So much thinner than paper, but they're more durable. And I wanted a card that would last because, you know, paper gets wet, paper tears, and uh, is very vulnerable to the elements. So, um, yeah, I am. Um, I have handed a couple of cards out to young men who were sitting at a table in a pizza restaurant, and I just placed four cards in front of the, the young young boys. Um, but I'm probably going to get a lot more assertive with doing that because it is a passive way to, um, you know, advertise antinatalism. And why not? I mean, I figure I should just go for broke. Um, <laughs> um, somebody in my town called me a local celebrity because I'm very 
outspoken and I'm very visible. And I don't hide anything. I am very transparent with my beliefs and with, um, you know, spreading the truth and bearing witness for the truth. And that was my calling to, um, to, um, you know, fight for the unborn and, um, protect them from being born. So I'm about to wrap this video up and, um, but, oh, I started off talking about how hard it is to maintain comfort. So what prompted this video was that I finally got into my bed and turned the heating blanket up to warm my footsies. And um, finally, I'm at a time of my day where I'm the most comfortable. <sighs> Under some cozy blankets and a uh, comforter and electric blanket and mm, four or five dogs cuddling up to me. So, a stressful day with the waiting at the doctor's office, um, the cold weather, the cold hands, <laughs> cold nose, <laughs> um, and um, it's just, it's too hard to, to maintain comfort in this life, even for the most privileged among us, and Americans are privileged. All Americans, all North Americans, most North Americans are definitely privileged over parts of the country that I've been to. Um, we have a lot of things at our fingertips. Most countries will never have. And um, America and Canada are affluent. Even Mexico is doing pretty well compared to some of the places that I've been. But um, um, there's just so many discomforts in life. And uh, uh, yeah, some people don't even have beds. Some people sleep on the floor. Some people are sleeping on concrete in Mumbai. Um, in the middle of traffic um, at all hours, maybe even a piece of cardboard on the bottom, sleeping in their clothes, no assistance over there, no, no welfare, <laughs> nothing over there. But um, life is just too hard for, for everybody, and... Uh, there's no point in continuing the human race because we are sacrificing young people to carry on tradition, to carry on family names, to carry on humanity. And um, it's cruel. It's cruel to sacrifice their lives in order to pass on human DNA. So, I don't know if I'm effective in my videos. I do hope that I garner the attention of natalists or young people before they have reproduced. I hope it's not just other anti-natalists who are watching my channel. Um... I hope that I appeal to people who can be a catalyst in stopping future births and stopping reproduction, stopping all the harm. So thanks for watching for almost 20 minutes. And please jot your reply, your comments below. And... Um, Please support my channel. I, in the description, I always put, uh, sometimes I put, a, um, you know, a PayPal address for you to send a donation to help me out. Thank you.